Hi folks, I'm Abel James, and thanks so much for listening to the Fat Burning Man Show, where we talk about real food and real results. It's been a harrowing week, and I have a little bit of story time with you before we get to our special guest, Steve Cam, the guy behind Nerd Fitness. I just want to tell you guys what's been going on behind the scenes, because it's been completely wacky. And so I wrote a blog post uh, about what's happened with the podcast and why you might have had some trouble reaching us in the past few days or weeks. Uh, and so I'm just going to go straight into it and read it to you right now. It's, it's kind of fun. It's a ridiculous story. I cannot believe it happened. So <laughs> here we go. How accidentally deleting my subscribers gave us the number one podcast in Spain. So to those of you who had trouble accessing my podcast this past week, I apologize. We screwed up big time. In short, my subscribers were deleted and my podcast was completely broken for days. And incredibly, your response made us hit number one in health in Spain. <laughs> How is that possible? So the backstory is RSS is dying. Uh, RSS is a technology that allows users to subscribe to blogs and podcasts, and it's being phased out in the next few months. Uh, the service that I used to host my blog and podcast subscribers, FeedBurner, is no longer being supported by Google. Uh, as I have or had nearly 100,000 subscribers using the platform, the slow and painful death of RSS will be a royal nightmare for independent bloggers and podcasters like myself. So to preempt the phase out of RSS, I put my best guy on it. We decided to cut out the middleman, which is FeedBurner, and go straight into iTunes using PowerPress. We get a tech from PowerPress on the horn, and he walked my team member through the process of making the switch real time. The tech said that we'd have to delete all of our feeds to move forward. I was relatively unreachable enjoying my time at the Consumer Health Summit, which is an incredible conference mastermind type thing with some of the top authors, bloggers, celebs, and business people in health and wellness hosted by the wonderful Mr. Michael Fishman, who's a past guest to the show. So <laughs> wait, are you sure I need to, to delete all of my feeds? My employee asks a bit flustered. Yes, you do. Go ahead and delete them. The tech guy reassures. And poof, all of my blog and podcast subscribers are deleted and my podcast breaks, WTF. With the click of a button, many tens of thousands of loyal subscribers were deleted, probably many of you out there. Uh, and my podcast feed breaks, meaning fans and listeners can't even download past shows, let alone the new one that I just put out uh, with Scott. As I'm sitting at the conference, my inbox and social media blows up. Abel, where's your show? Like Dave Clark said, has anyone mentioned that the podcast is messed up on iTunes? I haven't been able to download in three days. Uh, another guy named Scott says, your podcast feed in iTunes seems busted. No more podcast updates. So gritting my teeth, I pick up the phone <laughs> and call my employee. Did you guys just break my podcast and delete all of my fans? Uh, and the response was, uh, kind of. So we were all freaking out for a few days trying to fix everything and get the show back to you folks. Uh, and here's where it gets cool. Because uh, our fans, like you, are so amazingly passionate, you frantically searched Google to find the show and the blog. So traffic suddenly quadrupled, email subscriptions tripled. Uh, and I put a little, if you'd like to check it out on the blog post, a graph of what my traffic looked like throughout that time when my podcast broke. But it just, people flocked to Google. It was super cool. Uh, you also flocked to iTunes to subscribe directly through Apple. Uh, and so here's where it gets really crazy. Enough of you slammed Apple with subscriptions at the same time that my broken podcast raced up the charts and soared to the top five in a half dozen countries and hit number one in Spain for the first time, even though my new episode wasn't picked up and not a single person could download the podcast. And I don't even speak Spanish. So we screwed up royally and incredibly topped the charts again. And I have, I have only you to thank for that. It's harrowing and incredible experiences like these that inspire me to do everything I do uh, to change the world. And I couldn't do it without you guys. So you rock. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, after several days of losing our minds, here's the quick update. We fixed the show. It looks like everything's working for now. Uh, I appreciate you bearing with us in the meantime. We're not tech people. We're just boneheads with keyboards and microphones. But we really are trying to change the world. And with your help, we believe that we can. So if you never want to lose me again, please go ahead and uh, go to fatburningman.com, enter your best email address, and uh, along with my weekly show, I'll also be sending you plenty of, of goodies as well as a free ebook. So just go to fatburningman.com and put in your best email address if you want to make sure that you don't lose me because uh, on iTunes and on Google and uh, other places like that that are big companies, sometimes 
things go wrong. But on my own blog, I can almost guarantee that I'll always have it up. I'll always have video podcasts. I'll have podcasts. I'll have my blog itself, um, even if I have to back it up 19 times. So if you want to reach me, that's the best way to do it. So um, thanks for bearing with me once again. And uh, hopefully we've all learned something from the process. And <laughs> I, I can't believe that, you know, I guess it was just turning lemons into lemonade. Uh, but thank you. I could not have done it without you. So thank you so much. All right. So enough of that onto the show with Mr. Steve cam. This is a really fun one. Um, so a little background on Steve. Uh, he's the guy behind nerdfitness.com, which is a super popular blog, uh, and fitness community. And he's helped thousands of regular people level up their lives as he says. Uh, and he does this from his laptop while exercising and exploring all over the world. His adventures include diving with sharks on the Great Barrier Reef, hiking the Great Wall of China, and tracking animals in South Africa. Now on the show, we talk about how you can make your fitness and life as fun as a video game, how to get kids to level up in real life instead of World of Warcraft, and what it's like to live like James Bond in Monte Carlo. All right, let's go hang out with Steve. All right, folks, today we're here with Mr. Steve Cam, who's the creator and owner of nerdfitness.com, a fitness community dedicated to helping desk jockeys, slackers, and average Joes level up their their lives. What's on the what's going on, Steve? Not too much, Abel. How you doing, dude? Oh, life is so good, man. Life Absolutely, really right? Good. So you're in Nashville, Tennessee right now, another music Nashville, city. Tennessee. I'm overlooking the uh, the Cumberland River right now as we speak, and it is a so beautiful cool. day. That's awesome. I'm uh I'm not jealous one bit because it's a beautiful day here too. Yeah, take, Austin's take pretty that. sweet. <laughs> so um, we were just talking a little bit before this interview about your epic quest. I'd love to start there because like no one else can start with that. Everyone else <laughs> loves to start with their little story about when they were a kid. But you like right. how about walking the Great Wall of China or something like that? Sure. So growing up, I was always big into video games. You know, I loved games like Legend of Zelda and um, Mario, any sort of old school role playing games like Chrono Trigger and Earth, like, you know, the, those games for Super Nintendo uh, that would just suck hours and hours and hours of your life away. Speaking my and language. I just I love the concept behind those games because you always start out as generally this little kid who is given like a wooden sword and shield and you're tasked with saving the world eventually. You know what yeah. I mean? And in order to go from this weak kid to this epic badass you take it step by step by step and you get to explore new lands and as you get stronger and gain more experience you get better weapons and then you can go fight bigger bad guys and that gets you to a new place and everything so i fell in love with that concept of exploration leveling up um having new experiences getting stronger getting bigger getting faster except i realized that i was spending so much of my time doing that with a character in a video game yeah. and not devoting any of my time in real life to doing these things right. so as I was forming the concept for Nerd Fitness about five, about five years ago now, uh, being a huge nerd and gamer, I was like, this, this makes a lot of sense. Why don't we, instead of looking at, instead of leveling up a character in a video game, why don't I look at myself as that character and life as the video game that I'm playing? Like That just so seemed cool. like so much more fun to me than having a bucket list. Yeah. And you know, it's one thing if you make a bucket list of like 2,000 things, everybody looks at it and you're like, that's really intimidating. And they always say, I'm going to do something and they never actually get around to doing anything on it yeah. because there's no real progression or anything to it. So when I decided I wanted to start living life a little bit more and going on these great adventures, instead of calling it a bucket list of things I wanted to accomplish, I, wanted, I decided to call it my epic quest of awesome. <laughs> and uh, I broke each continent into a different like video game world, like South America's like the jungle world and um, England was, I'm sorry, uh, Europe was like the ancient city world and Africa, I think it was the desert world and, and things like that. So uh, I broke each continent into a kind of its own video game level. And then as I crossed things off of my list, I gave myself experience points for them. So every time I crossed five things off of my list, I would gain a level. So now I think I'm level 10 or 11. Actually, I haven't looked at it in about a month. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm somewhere around level 10 or 11. And I even came up with the concept of like epic, like master quests, things that like are way more challenging than, than other quests. And as a result of completing those, I would gain a full level. So like I spent one, week, one weekend living like James Bond at, at, uh, in Monaco and Monte Carlo and decided that was worth the, worth the full level because it was just one of those absurd weekends that, you know, I will look back on for the rest of my life and say, I can't believe that happened. Okay, now I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> what okay so what is living like james bond then <laughs> well i decided other than the whole you know killing people thing yeah uh besides that 
you know, I, if uh, I had to be in a tuxedo, clearly, uh, I had to be staying in some place really ritzy and fancy that one, I would never end up in regardless. Otherwise, yeah. it just wouldn't have happened. And three, I had to gamble. So okay. like, okay, if I'm going to gamble, wear a tuxedo and be someplace really fancy, where am I going to be? And I was like, it's got to be Monaco and the Monte Carlo, like the famous <laughs> Monte Carlo casino. <laughs> so I, I was staying in like this really cheap hostel in Nice, France, and uh, found a woman at the hostel that spoke both English and French and uh, had her come with me to a French costume shop and they rented tuxedos inexplicably. So I'm in like the back room of this costume shop with like giant like lion heads behind me and, and like giant like really furry costumes and they happen to also rent um, tuxedos. So I rented a tux uh, and thanks to some creative travel hacking, I used airline points to book a night at the Fairmont Monte Carlo. So oh. I go strolling into the Fairmont Monte Carlo in like board shorts and flip flops and t-shirt <laughs> and a tuxedo over my shoulder and get to say, hi, I'm, I have a reservation for tonight. <laughs> and the guy behind the counter looked at me like, what are you doing here? And then sure enough, he looked it up on his computer and he's like, right this way, Mr. Kim, let me show you to your <laughs> state room. So uh, ended up, ended up uh, hanging out in Monaco for the day and just sitting there, wandering around looking at like billion dollar yachts thinking like how, you know, what did I do in my life to get me to this point? Yeah. And, um, and then I put the tuxedo on, rolled on down to the Monte Carlo Casino. And unfortunately, they didn't have Baccarat, which is like the game that James Bond played in the very first right. Casino Royale movie. I'm sorry, not movie, but the first, the book, the original uh, James Bond novel. And so I ended up playing blackjack. And over the course of like four hours or five hours, I actually ended up winning a decent amount. Really? Yeah. So I ended up actually making money while living like James <laughs> Bond. That is James Monica. Bond. Very James Bond, <laughs> uh, and then and then about three in the morning, I, I I convinced some people to do take videos of me like doing one-handed push-ups in my tuxedo out in front of the Monte Carlo at three in the morning while getting really strange looks from the security guards. So I woke up the next morning going just laughing hysterically, like, wow, "Wait, what just happened? How did I how did I get here?" So that was probably one of the more definitely one of the more memorable experiences of my entire life. Oh man, that's awesome. So why don't we go back a little bit further then? You um, you were leveling up in video games, which uh, I can definitely relate to. I was thinking mm-hmm. back to when I was playing like Diablo and StarCraft. Oh and stuff yeah, like oh that. dude, Diablo yeah. and the the Archangel <laughs> Staff of Apocalypse. I was like the epic weapon from that that I remember, and oh, so much fun. But yeah, so good. So many hours get sucked into it. They do, but at the same time, I realized I learned the art of management. <laughs> like through those video games, you know, like managing resources and all this stuff. And now oh, like I sure. have a team of people and it, it kind of like works that way. So it's very interesting though, but like to, to make that shift to actually like who cares about video games? That's one of the reasons I don't really play them even anymore is because like I'd much rather be improving myself, whether it's my body mm-hmm. or my life or, or learning sure. something new or building a skill. Right. Um, so how do you, how do you start that? Because I think a lot of, uh, you know, kids who are younger than we are, are kind of stuck in the middle of that, right? They're spending a lot of time just in front of the TV or in front of the computer, not really working on themselves as much as they're working on their video game mm-hmm. skills. Right. So how do you start applying those principles to real life? Yeah, well, honestly, I looked at, what I did was I looked at all of the reasons that I was playing video games or the reasons why people spend 14 hours a day playing World of Warcraft yeah. and figuring out a way to apply those things to improving myself. So it comes down to a couple of things. One, there is a very specific built-in reward system. If you're playing for five minutes or for 20 minutes, you're going to see some sort of progress. You might get a little more gold. Your experience bar might move up a little bit. So even if you don't go from level two to level three, you might get halfway there. And it's still you still feel like you've accomplished something. Mm-hmm. And only that, after you have accomplished something, there's always something else next to be working on. So when I took those concepts and applied them to fitness, it made so much sense to me. It's like yesterday or two weeks ago, I couldn't pick up this amount of weight. And instead of I'm going to go to the gym and work out and spend two hours on a treadmill being miserable, um, instead, like, let's, let's apply these, these reward systems and this, this progress principle to fitness. And instead yeah. of saying I have to go work out, it's like I wonder what I'm capable of today. And it's tough to get to that point, but as soon as you do, like, it's – you know, it's almost like standing up on a surfboard for the first time. Like that first that you're like, I don't get it. I, and then the first time you pop up, you're like, I get it. This yeah. may, I get, I, now I get why people spend all of their time doing these, right. all of their time doing this stuff. I just did that last year for the first time. Totally get that right? feeling. Oh, and you wipe out, you wipe out, you wipe out, you wipe out. And then one day you finally pop up on a wave and you ride it for like three seconds and then you wipe out and you're like, holy crap, that was freaking awesome. <laughs> right? Like that was the greatest thing I've ever done. Totally. 
same thing related to me for fitness. It was like, holy crap, this is amazing. Like I couldn't pick that up last week, Mm -hmm. but now I can. And I feel a little bit better about myself. And that is positively reinforcing me to want to be able to lift more or to run a little bit faster or to, to focus on this skill that I wasn't previously capable of. So that would be the progress principle of it. And then the other thing uh, I would say would be the reward factor. You know, like I said, there's always something that you get that rewards you back. So that's the way I look at fitness. Like I, I, I don't really necessarily agree with the people that you know, they go, they like, oh, I, I run for an hour so that I can come home and stuff my face with chocolate cake. Like, yeah. you know, you're, you're, re- you're rewarding yourself with something that is taking you two steps backwards. Right. Instead of trying to reward yourself with something that further pushes you down this path to being a better person. So, mm-hmm. you know, That's it might cool. be like, well, if I go to, if I exercise for two weeks or if I exercise every other day for two weeks, then I've earned the right to sign up for a karate class or mm-hmm. go to a rock climbing gym or something. And you develop this other skill. And as you're working on that, it's, it slowly starts to shift away from, I'm just here to lose weight and instead becomes part of how can I become better at this thing that I'm really starting to enjoy. Yeah. So, you know, those are the, I think probably the two big things uh, as far as fitness goes. And then for me, the third thing was just the sense of adventure and exploration because up until starting nerd fitness, I had never really traveled yeah. and I was terrified of, really? you know, like uh, I traveled alone for, for really two years. Um, and yeah, it was really scary for me. Like I, I'm very picky. I was a very picky eater. I could see myself as, as an introvert. And, and then I just started thinking of it like, dude, this is really important for you. And this is important for you and your development as a person. Like you need to do these things. You need to go experience and explore and have these adventures and do stuff that scares the crap out of you because yeah. it's going to make you a better person. That's true. So how do you, do you ever worry that you like plateau and have already done all of the coolest things in the world? <laughs> Boy, I hope not. Um, honestly, no, I think there's every, every adventure brings something different. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be, you know, like right now I'm working on, you know, handstand push-ups and holding a handstand for 60 seconds. Mm-hmm. And that's on my Epic Quest too. Um, you know, I, I put some things on there that are just off the wall crazy, but there are also things in there that are just making me a better person, like trying to learn another language mm-hmm. or becoming a better cook or, you know, doing things like that. So I think although some experiences definitely leave a longer lasting impression uh, impression than others Mm -hmm. um i don't think i'm ever going to run out of stuff that interests me and will allow me to have some really fun experiences along the way regardless of how crazy or adventurous it might seem on the outside it's still a lot it's still exciting because you still get to see yourself do something you either haven't done before or haven't been able to do that you can now do yeah that's cool so you, uh, you're level like 10, maybe 11, <laughs> right? So <laughs> what I think do you I'm like recommend? 10, I think, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you recommend to someone who's level one in fitness anyway? How do you start with your own body? What did you learn along the way that can mm-hmm. help people kind of start their process and make sure they're following the right advice? Sure. I, I, you know, obviously I think fitness is really, can be really overwhelming for a lot of people, especially people that, that tend to stumble across nerd fitness. You know, a lot of my yeah. readers are 300 pounds plus 400 pounds. I mean, they're, they're, they're big dudes. Um, they're, they're big people that know they need to make a change, but they're not quite sure what they should be doing. And they see so much conflicting information out there. And generally, because they're nerds reading nerd fitness, they also tend to be incredibly smart, mm-hmm. but they also tend to be incredibly over analytical yeah. and they can work themselves into, up into such a frenzy because they spend six hours reading 60 different fitness websites, each one presenting them with a different amount of information. So. You know, I, the way I look at it is like nerd fitness is a site so simple, even like a rocket scientist could understand it. You know, like they're really smart yeah. and it's taking these concepts and breaking them down into such simple concepts, taking these, these really complex um, things and breaking them down into such simple concepts. Like, dude, do not worry about specific numbers of, of calories or if three sets of five or four sets of like, d- it's going to be okay. Relax. Yeah. Let's, let's get you started. Go for a walk today. Like. Go for a walk and then wake up tomorrow and go for another walk for five minutes. Like start somewhere. Just do do something, get started, that which is the most difficult part, I think, for so many people because they're so afraid of making a mistake. You know, I let them know that the mistake is not the problem. This the mistake the the problem is being so afraid of making that mistake that they just yeah. don't get started. Yeah. So, you know, I have like really basic things on the site that people can get started with. Like, here's a beginner's guide to healthy eating. Like, take one thing out of this and make one change this week. 
Here is a beginner bodyweight workout that you can do in the comfort of your own home. No gym membership required, no equipment required. You can go into your living room right now and knock this workout out in 20 minutes. Yeah. The important part is just getting started. So, you know, what I've noticed, I think a lot of people, especially if they're, if they're overweight and in debt and in a job they dislike and all these things, you know, I encourage them to get started with, with their fitness because I've seen the confidence and momentum that people can build from fitness, diet, exercise. And if they can make those changes, then all of a sudden they start to think, okay, if I can complete this, like what else am I capable of? Yeah. And what other areas of my life that I'm not technically thrilled with do I now feel like I have a lot more control over? So, you know, the big thing for me is just kind of getting people to understand that one, getting started is, is the most important thing. Two, we are all creatures of habit. And if we can focus on tiny, teeny little habits that we can fix, whether it's, like I said, a five minute walk or doing a really basic 10 minute workout every other day, that is so much better than, you know, you might think it's only 10 minutes, but that 10 minutes is, you know, a thousand times more valuable than sitting at home and doing nothing and reading another fitness article. So um, the, the expression I use is from, um, don't, don't be an underpants gnome. Um, it's a South Park episode where these, <laughs> these little gnomes, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> <laughs> these, these little gnomes sneak into the children's bedrooms of South Park and steal their underwear. And the kids stumble across their giant cave of, yeah, I guarantee this is going to be the only vin- interview you're ever going to have with underpants gnomes. <laughs> they stumble across this, this cavern of gnomes collecting underpants, and they ask the gnomes, what the heck are they doing? And the gnomes say, we're building a business. You know, I was like, what do you mean? Like, phase one is collect underpants. Phase two is a giant question mark. They have no idea. And phase three is profit. They never figure what the heck phase two is, so they just get stuck collecting underpants. So from my perspective, I let people know, like, don't be an underpants collector. Yeah. Don't spend three weeks reading every article and every single thing you can about fitness and never getting started. Read one article, find one website that resonates with you, and then yeah. get started immediately. Step two is action. You know, you can't get from step one to step three without the middle. And yeah. the middle is just freaking getting started. So um, if I can get people on that wavelength of thinking like, okay, I'm just going to do something and anything is better than nothing. And then we'll see what tomorrow brings and how much more I can do after that. I love that because especially these days with millions of podcasts, millions of blogs, like, oh, there's so many out there. It's so easy to have too much information. And as soon as you read one thing, you read the exact opposite and both people swear by it. So you're like, Uh oh, I guess I'll just do nothing then. Right. Oh, and then get in the comment section and people are like fighting and yelling at each other. It's like, oh, you could lose yourself for days in there. So yeah, it's yeah I tell people find something that works for you or that, that resonates with you yeah. and give it a shot and just get started yeah. because get more often than not, it's going to be successful. Who knows? Diet and exercise. Like apparently that's what works these days. Right. <laughs> There's no magic formula, magic pill. It's literally, it's, it's eating right and, and eating right, getting stronger and finding some sort of exercise that makes you happy. Yeah. It's so interesting. And there's like the whole paleo vegan thing and, and how much like a lot of them hate oh, each so, other and so swear much, yeah. the other one's so wrong. <laughs> it's, I'm actually having Rich Roll on the podcast after this. And oh, very so cool. that'll be a lot of fun because like I, the way that I eat is very close to the way that a vegan eats. You know, and, and there are so many similarities, especially when you talk about like raw foodists and like farm to table stuff and having your own mm-hmm. garden. It's like we just freaking agree about most things. Oh, we're things. so close on like 95% of the stuff. It's Except for bacon. That's, that's really the only <laughs> 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 That's the only difference. But I, I stand by it. <laughs> we're on its right, exactly. <laughs> but is, so you mentioned things that uh, other people are working on, like habits that, that might be bad, that they might be tweaking. Is there something that you're working on right now? Uh, I'm sure there is that that you're trying to make better about yourself. Oh, totally. I and I'm finally getting around to it, but I am such a procrastinator. Mm. Um, and I've noticed this actually a lot from a lot of people that run blogs and things. Like a lot of people ask me, like, "Oh, so you know, how far in advance are your posts scheduled?" And and I'm like, generally, I'm like, I'm writing it the night before, the morning of. Like, I finish writing it. I'm like, all right, publish. Here we go. Like, yeah. hopefully, hopefully, you guys like it. Um, that being said, now that Nerd fitness is getting bigger and I'm trying to take it more seriously and I have a team of people that are also dependent on nerd fitness and are, are dependent on me to c- create content and produce content in certain mm-hmm. uh, on time. I've, I've had to really focus and work on it and I mean this has been something for my entire life that I've struggled with. I would every, every school project, every college paper, it was last minute yeah. and that's just the way that things went. 
two weeks ago, I finally made a commitment to, to my team. And I said, all right, guys, here's the story. Like, you know, we're going, I'm going to pay, I'm going to donate X amount of money to this cause or whatever, something that I don't necessarily agree with. Anytime my posts are not a week ahead of schedule. Wow. You know, like, so, so now I have four drafts done and this is, you know, I'll, for somebody that for years and years and years and years just refused and just always said, I'm always going to be the guy that procrastinates. Um, within two weeks, it's been like, okay, like now I just, I get up and I write the articles and if it's, if, you know, so now I'm, uh, I'm going to say about a week and a half ahead on, on articles. I'm going to continue cool. to try to push that back. Uh, but it was honestly, it was the threat of parting with my own hard earned money to give it to, um, you know, I can't even remember what, what it was, but I knew I would didn't want to, didn't want to pay it. So, uh, that was a really important factor for me for starting to build this habit is building some sort of accountability system. And, yeah. you know, as, as, the way I look at it, especially for fitness too, when people say like, oh, I'm going to exercise every day this week and then they miss a day because they're sitting on the couch watching Arrested Development or Seinfeld reruns or something, there's no accountability system built in there. If they miss it, the only buddy that they're really screwing over is themselves yeah. and there's no outside, there's no, there's no recourse if, or there's, you know, nothing, nothing bad happens if they miss that workout. So until you get those habits built, you have to build some sort of system or fail, you know, fail proof, fail safe in there. So when you do fail, your ass is like, it's, it's, it's on you. Like yeah. you're the guy, you know, it's, something's going to happen. So a friend of mine was trying to get in shape for his wedding. Uh, this is about a year and a half ago. And he had spent two years trying and trying to get healthy, but always fell off the wagon and gave up and blah, blah, blah. Right. So he <laughs> said, all right, here's the story. I'm going to get to 9% body fat and I'm going to do this and this by my wedding within in six months or I'm going to pay my friends 500 bucks. And I was like, dude, do you have $500 to give away? And he goes, no. And if I do, my new wife will probably divorce me immediately. <laughs> if I'm not. Sure enough, two months later, he reached his goal. Whereas wow. it, six, two, two years prior to that, he spent every day talking about what he was going to do. Right. But never actually doing it. So mm -hmm. I think if, if people can, can kind of take the time to understand how important the habit is aspect is when it comes to getting healthy and building some sort of accountability system in like we talked about before not just rewarding yourself with things that reward you back when you actually follow through with something but some sort of penalty if you don't follow through with it when you put those two together and you average it out and you make that work for you for two weeks three weeks you know for that initial really slow lack of momentum period once you get beyond that and you start to really enjoy the workouts and enjoy how you feel when you eat right or when you sleep enough or when you get something done, um, it becomes less about the rewards and the, and the penalties and more about the activity itself. Yeah. And it's really gamification of your life, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I get my way too much. Yeah. How, how else do you do that? Not, not just in fitness, but like, how do you do that in your life in general? Oh man. I mean, there's so many different ways. Like I gamify like folding my laundry. Really? Oh yeah. I put a song on and I have to have all of my laundry folded before the song is up. So like, <laughs> I'm random on my iPod and I'll blast music or like cleaning up my apartment, like taking something that seems ordinary and mundane and finding a way to, to really enjoy it. The fact I go through, because I fly so often, um, I've started timing myself to see how quickly I can get through the security line. Yeah. So like, I have like the things like ready to go in my pocket. I feel like I'm in like a formula one, like pit crew. Yeah. You know, I was like pulling things out of my pocket, like shoes coming off and you know, bags going up in the thing, laptops already out <laughs> to see if I can cut a couple of seconds off it. And it makes this generally miserable experience. And at least something is like, Hey, I wonder if I can get better at it. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. I know, but you know, I, why not? That's killer. It makes, yeah. it makes lame stuff way more fun. Right. And if you can't make the lame stuff fun, then, you know, you should be able to make anything fun. And if it's <laughs> lame, but you still need to do it. I mean, if you have to do it anyway and it's lame, yeah. I might as well have some fun with it. Yeah. And I was, I was thinking about that the other day. I always have my notebook around that I carry and just fill up with notes and ideas and mm -hmm. diagrams all day. Um, it's just the way I'm wired, I guess, and one of my weird nerd eccentricities. <laughs> but I was thinking of uh, the first time I drove. You know, it was the most amazing idea in the world, right? Like getting behind the the steering wheel and actually yep. controlling this lumbering mechanical beast and being like, I can do this. I can go somewhere. It represents freedom. And like now I have like a fast car a convertible and it's totally awesome. I can't imagine having anything better. But mm -hmm. like if I have to go somewhere, I'm like, oh, I have to drive. And it's like, what? Like, no way. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that because it's exactly the same experience, right? So mm -hmm. it's like. 
taking these things that would be mundane, you have to remind yourself or, or gamify maybe to make it cool again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just, I mean, you know, for better or worse, I think a lot of companies are throwing gamification aspects into things that they have yeah. just because they think they're supposed to, but they don't actually understand right. why we're doing, why we, why nerds do the things that they do. So it's I think fun, they can, really. def- yeah, as long as you can find a way, yeah, as long as you can find a way to make these things more enjoyable or to show people progress. And I think that's why, you know, that, that the important part of, of, exercise and that you know these very small incremental improvements i'm a huge fan of getting people to, to track their workouts and yeah and record their not just stepping on a scale but taking measurements and whatever because like i said in a video game if you just started at level zero and you didn't know anything and all of a sudden the next all of a sudden you dinged level 10 but you had no idea if they were you know how close you were or what was next or or how far you had progressed you'd probably lose you know, you'd probably give up a lot more quickly than if you had levels one and then two and then three and then four. And you could very specifically see, I am making an improvement. Yeah. So when it comes to fitness and exercise, if you're not taking pictures and you're only looking at a scale and it didn't move, it only moved down half a pound after a week and you're like, oh, this is miserable. But if you realize like, oh, hey, look, I, I might have only lost half a pound, but I took an inch off of my waist mm-hmm. and I can now do 20, I can now do 10 push-ups, whereas last week I could do five push-ups on my knees or... Uh, I look in you know the mirror and like I'm actually more defined than I was a month ago. And you know if you don't if you don't keep track of these things and show yourself that there is some progress happening, it's very easy to get discouraged because you just you just feel like you're going through the motions instead of actually improving on something. So yeah. I think the more ways you can kind of track and show to yourself, yes, I am getting better in one way or another, whether it's stronger or faster, or I'm losing inches, or my body fat percentage is dropping, or I look better, or I feel better. As long as something is moving in the right direction, keep doing it. Like yeah. you're gonna, you know, little tiny small changes add up to really big results over time. Yeah. Ah, and I'm just thinking about this talking to you now for for the first time, really. But uh, so my girlfriend Allison uh, was a professional gamer. She was on like uh, Ultimate Gamer reality show, and that's awesome. <laughs> she was in the Frag Dolls and played all the circuits. Like, Halo oh, very was, cool. Okay, she was yep. always best at that. And so, like, when we got together, we started playing video games again because I'm like, oh, that's so cool. But we kind of got bored of that because, like, we're not kids anymore, and like, we actually want to improve things in our lives. But it is all it's it's the same fundamentals, same principles, when, right? Yeah, it's same just, principles. You got to find so a way to apply it to your life. You just want to basically take that energy that you might apply to a crossword puzzle or. Sudoku or Angry Birds or whatever, right. Right. and and apply that to making yourself better. Instead of like reaching the next level in a video game, you're learning how to cook the best omelet mm-hmm. you've you've ever tried, and your right. friends have ever tried. So, so she's actually she doesn't really play video games anymore. I don't, I don't really either. She um, cooks and has become an amazing cook and is is leveling up constantly. I'm kind of That's doing awesome. a similar thing with like the Krav Maga, which I'm totally into now. Very and, cool. Uh, before it was fitness, but once you, you kind of reach max level at a point, right? It's, it's almost like once you know how to eat, you know how to eat and then you just have to do it. <laughs> right. And then, <laughs> and then you know how to work out, you know, what, what gets you defined and strong. And then it's just a matter of doing it. And then how do you keep finding that next thing, that next challenge? Yeah. So the way I look at it, you know, I've written a couple articles about it, but the way I look at it, you know, consider yourself a dragon slayer. <laughs> so you have this epic goal that you're trying to work on. Maybe you're trying to lose a certain amount of weight for your wedding or you want to get to a certain amount of body fat percentage. You want to be able to do, uh, you want to just look, but whatever, whatever it is, you know, I have this goal that you're working towards. And if you get to the point where you've reached that goal, I think it's really important for you to find another mountain to climb or another dragon to slay. And I think the shift comes when you make your shift from either personal appearance or a specific number on the scale, like yeah. that's what people's goals initially started as. I want to look better in a bathing suit, or I want to lose 50 pounds by the end of the year, or I want to be able whatever. If you can shift it towards a performance goal, um, that's when I think people really start to have, that's when people can continue to have success. They are working towards something instead of getting complacent and t- patting themselves on the back and saying, oh, look, I did it. And then, you know, losing momentum and losing energy because you're just kind of treading water instead i think it's important for you to have that that next dragon to slay and as a result of that when you can shift your focus to something performance based whether it's like you said krav maga or um if you you know my big thing is like i'm getting into gymnastics now like i have i love it like 
I, I work it on like planches and um, you know front levers and back levers and L sits and handstands and and things like that. As a result of that, because these are because it's a challenging exercise for me, um, my appearance. You know, I'm still heading in the right direction of where I was before. Before I was like I'm skinny and weak. I want to be big and strong. It's yeah. like. You can keep those things, but now your goal has shifted. It's like, okay, what do I need to do to get better at handstands? What do I need to do to get better at Krav Maga? What do I need to do to get better at whatever this performance-based goal is? You can shift your your focus to that, and as a result, your appearance will continue to, to catch up with it. Uh, I think it was Mark Twight, the guy that trained the actress in the movie 300. You know, appearance, his quote was, appearance is a consequence of fitness. Hmm. So if you can put your focus on the fitness aspect of it, and again, this is the whole gamification thing, like when you're focusing on that performance and improving at that performance, as a result, your personal appearance and well-being will continue to shift in that in that avenue as well. So, you know, and I think, we, you know, two examples, like I said, you know, would be gymnastics or Krav Maga. Maybe some people get really big into powerlifting and they want yeah. to see how much they can lift or they get big into, you know, bodybuilding, whatever it may be. As long as they're happy and healthy and still working towards something, mm-hmm. I'm I'm all for it. Well, so what about the the other side of that? I remember when I was running marathons, it was like a, a very common thing was like you finish your marathon mm-hmm. and then you're totally bummed out for a while. <laughs> like you had right. the marathon blues, like your your body is broken, whether mm-hmm. or not you you made the time that you wanted to or did what you wanted to. Um, people just get bummed out because they're like, well, what now? You re- you reach that goal. How do you, uh, in, in personal life or in fitness or anything else, how do you deal with that feeling? Because I think it is a pretty common feeling. Like you get, oh, yeah. you get there and you realize you've never arrived, right? It's, how do you deal with it's that? It's tough. You know, it's, I think it's really coming to the understanding that the, the journey owns the destination, as mm-hmm. they say. Like, so, you know, I've never run a marathon. Personally, I'm not a huge runner and I have a lower back issue that I probably, if I never run a marathon, I'm more than okay with that. Like yeah. that's just, that's just not my, th- I, I love strength training and, and gymnastics and, and things like that. Um, but I think it, this is not just fitness related, but life related too. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people say if only had X amount of money or if I only looked like that, or if I did, if I only could buy that thing or have a new car, then I'll be happier. And study after study after study has shown that you know, once you get to that point where you have that thing, your happiness, your body very quickly adjusts to this yeah. new normal of this is what now I expect to be normal, and your happiness has not really been been affected. So, I think for for a lot of people, and again, I can't I can't specifically relate to to marathon runners, um, but I struggle with the same things. You know, I get a chance to go do like really great adventures and have great moments and do great things, but after it's over with, you know, there's you kind of think like, oh, that's done, but what's yeah. What's next? What's yeah. next? And I definitely understand what you're saying. I de- I still struggle with it myself. Um, and for me, I think it's just understanding and doing a lot more. Uh, for me, it was doing the research on happiness specifically. I think there's a book called The Happiness Hypothesis yeah. that I absolutely loved, and um, and that really that really resonated with me because it it just made things made me realize that the activity that you're currently presently doing is yeah, it might be an ends to a means, but or a means to an end, um, but it's also still important to enjoy the thing that you're doing. Yeah. Because who knows what tomorrow might bring? You might not have that opportunity to do that thing again. You, yeah. you have, anything can happen. Um, and and for me, I was it's just kind of really understanding. Like, I did it. That was great. I'm glad. I now need to have my focus shifted to something else, or to be able to live presently and enjoy the thing that I'm currently doing. Yeah. And I struggle with that so much because my brain is just always going. Like I'm trying to build a meditation habit at the moment. <laughs> I last like three seconds before my brain's like Super Mario and push ups. <laughs> I can like, relate Ooh, to that. Here's a new iPhone app idea I have. And like, <laughs> what if we did this thing? And like my brain is just like just all it's it's like trying to, you know, uh, wrangle <laughs> i have no idea it's like a tasmanian devil when you're trying to like <laughs> keep it under control so i've got just one of those not, <laughs> yeah just does not work for me um but i'm working on it because i'm learning more and more that for me to be able to exist in the moment and and be present and be thankful for the things that are happening that i am capable of doing yeah not just having those goals but also enjoying the journey as well as when you reach it embrace it be happy be thankful celebrate it respect it for what it was yeah and then move on and then and then start thinking what that next thing might be yeah. um while again still not kind of 
driving yourself crazy with just being goal oriented, only goal oriented and never actually being happy with where you are and what's happening. Yeah. One thing that's really cool about the way that you do it on your blog is that you, you not only have the goals, but you have the, the stuff that was crossed off, the stuff that you achieved before. And I think it's so easy to forget, especially for people who are kind of wired like us that are always just like all over the place. Like what right. big cool thing can I do next? You have to remember that like, you've already done a lot of really cool stuff and, and you should give yourself a little bit of credit instead of feeling like, well, I'm aimless now. I don't have anything. I don't have any goal that I, you know, know that I want. Um, you look at all the stuff that you've done and it's like, wow, that, that was really cool. And it gives you an idea for something else you might do next. So for anyone who hasn't seen that, what, what's the, the page that that's on? It's yeah, it's I think quest, it's right. Yeah. It's just called, if you go to nerdfitness.com in the header, there's just called my epic quest of awesome. I think yeah. if you click on it, it'll show you what I've done and, and yeah, it's, I mean, it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy ride. Like in order for me to do a lot of that stuff, like I, I sold all of my stuff and lived out of a backpack and traveled. <laughs> and I know most people don't have that opportunity. Yeah. They either, they either don't need, maybe they have kids or they have a tremendous amount of debt or whatever it may be. They don't get a chance to do that. I don't think that's any reason to not have goals and lists. Yeah. I think they just might have to work on them a little bit more slowly than sure. I was able to because I was freaking living out of a backpack and yeah. and traveling the reason i did that was just because i had never traveled before and i knew if i didn't do it now and didn't have the i might not ever get that opportunity again so you know i'm, I'm just a normal guy that that built a built a company helping nerds getting healthy and decided i wanted to see the world because i had never seen it before so yeah. that's kind of where it began i saw myself as that little kid at the beginning of a video game and wanting to to improve my experiences and, and have some fun with it so a few years ago you were just a normal dude who loved video games who had never traveled before. And now, how, how many places have you been and how much cool stuff have you done? Oh, I've done I'm not going to lie. I've done a lot of really cool things. <laughs> and I feel so grateful and fortunate for those things. Um, you know, I think a big thing for me, and, uh, and it was, uh, it's funny, you know, some people are like, oh, I wish, I've actually written a couple articles about this, but people are like, must be nice to be like you. And I wouldn't, you know, I was like, guys, I'm not, you know, I, my college degree was in economics. Like, I, you know, I don't have like an exercise physiology degree. Instead, I'm trying to help you come in from the perspective of somebody that's exactly like you. Like, I yeah. love, I love sitting on my couch and playing video games or playing the piano or reading books for six hours at a time. But I also really enjoy being healthy and helping other people get healthy too. And then I identified the things that I wanted in my life that I didn't currently have or the experiences I wanted to have that I didn't. And I didn't have a lot of money, you know, I built this company from starting with a hundred bucks and mm -hmm. kind of built it up slowly working a full-time job and then worked this on the side for a year and a half before finally going full-time with it. And then, you know, it was still a huge struggle and it's, and it's been a, a challenge throughout the entire thing, but I'm so thankful for those experiences and it makes me so, I'm so happy that I was able to do the things that I did and live the way that I do. And now I get to wake up every morning and say, what am I going to do with my time? And two, how can I make other people's lives better? Yeah. And it's the greatest thing in the world. Um, but it took a long, it took, I mean, I've been at it for about, like I said, about five years now. And, you know, just now I'm at the point, I think where, like, I feel really great about where things are going and, and how we can further improve and, and increase stuff. So again, I'm just a normal dude. I, I built, Nerd Fitness was a hundred, like my own hundred bucks to start this sucker, mm -hmm. couple you know a couple years back, and just one person at a time slowly built up a community, and now I get to hang out with these people online all day, and then exercise and go have some crazy adventures all over the world, and 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 have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, that's so cool. It's super similar to my story too. And one of the great things that you said is that once you achieve whatever it is, weight loss or some fitness goal, you're like, well, what else can I do? Like, how else? Can I, can I change my life? And for me, it was mostly, it was a mindset thing. It was just like, well, if conventional wisdom is completely wrong about like what, the way that you should exercise and the way that you should eat, what else is completely wrong about the way that we're doing things? And that yep. allowed me to, to do what you did, you know, like build a blog, following podcasts, have a team of wonderful people. And now we, we live our lives in a really cool way. So I think you know, that's one of the reasons I do what I do with this podcast isn't just about like the, the fitness or the nutrition or whatever. It's about like proving to people that you can create the life of your dreams. And that's like the best job ever. <laughs> yeah, on, honestly. And I, I, what I've come to learn is, you know, experiences are so much more important than, than possessions. Yeah. You know, like I said, when I traveled, I sold everything. I sold my car. I sold everything I had. And I had a backpack of clothes. 
and that was it. And I found a way to do to book a cheap flights to to travel and had all these great experiences. And everybody's like, "Oh, you're so lucky." It's like, well, yeah. I also gave up a lot of stuff. Like yeah. people are like I could never do that. It's like, or I don't have the money. It's like, well, how much do you spend a month on cable, or how much right. you know? What size is your TV, or you know, whatever. Now that I actually have a home again, I like I had to like go buy a couch and a bed, and <laughs> no, no, I had nothing when I moved here to Nashville. Uh, but you know, it, it's made me realize more and more that after living for two years without anything like that, that the experiences are just so much more important and provide such a longer lasting happiness. You know, I will never forget the stories I've had for those past two years, two and a half years, and even now when I go on trips, like I was in Brazil for Carnival back in February. So cool. Like going to like Christ the Redeemer and, and riding gondolas up to the, you know, see overlooking Rio and uh, checking out the parade and everything. And I went with a buddy of mine and we're going to be telling that story to each other for the rest of our lives, you know? And that is just so much more valuable than, than whatever you had because as soon as you buy that thing, somebody else is going to have a better thing and then you're like, <laughs> oh, why don't I have that and this? And you're never happy with it. So yeah. you know, that, was, that was a big change for me to, to understand and to kind of move outside of the conventional space that, that you were just talking about. You know, what if they're wrong about these things? You know, yeah. The way somebody put it perfectly when they said, you know, you're currently taught to work at a job you dislike, to buy things you can't afford or need, to impress people you don't really like. <laughs> like, we're not, we're doing something wrong here. You know, this is not, this is not it. So once you can kind of get your mind around these things and say like, what is actually really important to me? And for me, it was, I'm going to cut my expenses to nothing and sell all of my stuff so that I can realize this dream of building a company and doing the things that make me happy. And going on adventures and having these these things and as a result of that because i got a chance to work on a job that made me happy i also got a chance to be really successful with that business yeah and because i was so used to living with so little it allowed me to just continually reinvest into the company without having yeah. to like oh i'm gonna need to go buy a bigger car now it's like i don't you know i'll drive a piece of crap car for the rest of my life and yeah. i don't care that makes me so happy and <laughs> i am more than okay with it because I still get a chance to do all these other great things and, and have a lot of fun. And more importantly, most importantly, you know, put my dent in the universe and yeah. help as many people as possible live a better life and be happier with the life that they might have already. Dent in the universe. I, I dig that. Uh, I, stole that gonna, Steve, I stole that from Steve Jobs. I wish I could take credit. I'm going to steal it from you. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, we're coming up on time. But, but before we go, why don't you just uh, tell the folks out there like one thing that they can do today to lead them in the right direction. One thing today, right direction, I would say go for a walk. Mm. Go for a five-minute walk. Put, just go through, the, go through the motions of putting on your sneakers, putting on a pair of shorts and a T-shirt, and go outside for a five-minute walk. And then yeah. tomorrow, do the same thing, five-minute walk. It's not the length of time. It's the, the process of building the habit. Right. That is so important. And once you build that first habit, it's like, okay, like, what else can I do next? And yeah. What, what other changes can I make? So go for a walk. I think walking is something that we, we all neglect far too much these days. I know you living in Austin, you get to walk more. I live here in Nashville, I get to walk. But a lot of people, the, the amount of walking they do is from their couch mm -hmm. to their car, to their desk at the office, back to the couch, back to bed. Yeah. Take cool. a step, do something more beyond that, and, and, then, and then slowly but surely build on it. Cool. So where can folks find you, Steve? And what are you working on now? Sure. Um, nerdfitness.com is the website. I'm on Twitter at Steve Cam. S-T-E-V-E-K-A-M-B. And uh, working on all sorts of stuff. We actually have um, the website is getting redesigned. It should be up and running in a couple of weeks, cool. which I'm really excited about because it looks phenomenal and it make, it's going to make people that are brand new to the site, um, really. it's going to make it really easy for them to find mm -hmm. the most important things that are going to help them out the quickest when they get started. Uh, beyond that, we're working on, I'm actually in the process of building a game um, really? that combines fitness and exercise. Yeah, it's called, cool. Rise, it's called Rising Heroes. Dude. And uh, if you go to risingheroes.com, essentially it's this whole thing that we're talking about with life and gamification and finding a way to level up a character. The only way doing so is to actually go outside and exercise and level up in real life. So wow. really a ambitious project. I had, I had an idea for this like f five years ago and I'm just now at the point where I can do it and fund it myself without having to go seek outside investment or give up parts of the company or whatever. Right. Um, and I'm really excited about that because it allows me to build this in the way that I know will resonate the most with, with, with people that are reading Nerd Fitness and help them out the most. And I not necessarily have to worry about contributing the most to the bottom line or impressing some banker or investment banker or whatever. Um, instead, I just get to say, like, that's really cool. 
this is going to make me really happy. Let's build it this way. So that's that's the, like the big crazy project that we're working on. And last but not least, we're building a fitness product uh, specifically for women that are brand new to fitness and cool. interested in uh, lifting weights and of uh, you know breaking down every single myth that comes with women and strength building and strength training and things like that. So those are the uh, the three big things right around the corner. That is awesome. Well, so much to learn from you and your journey, Steve. Um, thanks so much for taking the time to share it with my folks. And uh, I would I would love to have you back anytime soon. And definitely give me a shout if you're in Austin. <laughs> that sounds good. I definitely will. All right. Thanks, Steve.